Hello and welcome to A Layman Looks at the Word with Hal Richardson. This time we're starting a new program called the Ezekiel War. Ezekiel was a prophet of God during the time of the captivity of Israel. He saw very many wonderful things and he got to see visions that no one has ever seen. Some astonishing, he got to see God. But he made some very neat prophecies about certain end time events. One of these events is called the Ezekiel War, and the specifics of this war are found in Ezekiel 38 and 39. But to better understand the timetable of this, we're going to start with portions of Ezekiel 37. As we said, Ezekiel was a prophet during the Babylonian captivity of around 570 BC. He prophesied many things, and this war has not ever happened as of yet. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know I am the Lord. Ezekiel 37, 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld... Lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin was covered them from above, but there was no breath in them. And then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, and prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived, and they stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and you shall know I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land, then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. God is clear here that the dry bones was Israel. In the remaining verses of Ezekiel 37, God describes to Ezekiel that he would bring Israel home to the land he promised Abraham, united and from all over the world. He also says that they would have a king over them from David. Israel was made a nation on May 14, 1948. Despite constant persecution, they have become a world power. The prophecy of a king over them from David is referring to Jesus of Nazareth, who will soon return and fulfill this. Jesus is God's son from Mary, who was from the Davidic line in Luke. 
His earthly father, Joseph, is also from the Davidic kingly line in Matthew. This event of Israel coming home from all over the world is a prophetic promise fulfilled that was 2,500 years after the dispersal of Israel. Several Bible prophecies predict this. The prophecies of Ezekiel 38 and 39 could not happen until Israel was an established nation as it is now. Ezekiel 38, 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshla and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshla and Tubal, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of his bands, the house of Torgamah of the north quarters and all of his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. This photo here is from Prophecy Watchers, and it shows the modern equivalent to the bands that are listed here in Ezekiel 38. All of these are confederate together today uh, with Russia as the largest one, but you can see the different countries and what they are. Continuing in Ezekiel 38, 8. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. The latter years here are the time we are living in. Again, the time for this invasion is after Israel has come home and is a nation again, like now. Ezekiel 38, 9. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus said the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at rest, and dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, and to take a prey, and to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. For years I've wondered what this great spoil is. Is it oil? Israel is still looking for oil. They have drilled over 470 wells. The Leviathan gas well in the Mediterranean is the largest gas deposit ever found they will probably find oil as well. Verse 13 of Ezekiel 38, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, 
to carry away silver and gold and to take away cattle and goods and to take a great spoil? Sheba and Dedan are both in modern Saudi Arabia. The merchants of Tarshish is Great Britain, and the young lions thereof would be Britain's colonies, the main being the United States and Australia. Notice that these countries question this invasion, but they do not do anything. With the recent Abraham Accords started by President Trump and the alliances formed by the same, this scripture makes sense. Well, we're going to bring this program to a close right now. We see that there was a great company of nations that are going to come against Israel in the near future, I believe soon. And we see the nations that are questioning that. But there's nothing for us to fear. Us in Christ, those in the church, do not have to fear about these things, for God will take care of it. He will protect Israel. If you don't know God today, you need to ask Jesus into your life. He's the only means of salvation, and God provided all that he did so we could be with him. So ask him into your life today if you don't know him. This is Hal Richardson. Join me next time. We'll continue on the Ezekiel War. Bye for now.